Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Chris went fishing today, and so I'm by myself in the evening, and I did not cook supper. Amy came in there, and she made a bowl that had beans, avocado, sour cream. She put taco sauce in it. She put taco seasoning in her beans, and then she put um, a little bit of cheese, not much, and that's what she ate. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to make a bean salad out of that and put it on my show. She said, you're crazy. I said, I'm not. I think it would be delicious. I said, but it would have tomatoes in it. So it looked just really good, you know? And so do you know what I had? I had an avocado chopped up salt and pepper and tortilla chips. That's what I had for supper. I might have to eat me some kettle corn later tonight. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm just too lazy to cook. Miss Pris is running around here. So you're not getting up on that bed. And now he's calling me. I'm going to tell him I'm live and I'll come right back. I promise. Don't leave. I don't know if y'all are here or not, but I tried to call that man. I bet 20 times before I went live. Because he called me when I was sweeping the house and talking to my sister, and I couldn't get the phone in time, and so um, I kept trying to call him back, and tr tr I tried and tried and tried, and he just never would answer the phone, and the minute I went live, of course he called, and I knew he would, that little stinker. Anyway, my dogs are out. Uh, last night I didn't rest good. Soda, my white dog, I put her to bed. And she usually loves her crate. She's the one that begs to get to bed early, and she begs to be in the bed during the day. And last night I put her to bed, and it was, she'd go, rawr, rawr, and she'd move around, and she would turn around in her crate, and she would sit back down, and Chris was trying to go to sleep because he gets up at 6.30 to paint. And I was playing my puzzles. I, I like to play puzzles on my phone. And on my computer, I haven't got to do a puzzle on my computer now since, um, I believe, Sunday. I've been so busy this week. It's been crazy. Chris has been sitting there doing a puzzle every evening. Um, but he gets up and works hard, so I can't complain. He helps me do t so much compared to most men. But anyway... With that said, she kept on and on and on, so I got out of the bed, and I said, did he not give you a treat? So I gave her a treat, and I went back to bed, and she kept on and on and on. I got back up. I said, just get out of there. I'll, I'll move your pillow. I thought, maybe she don't want the pillow in there tonight, so I took the pillow out. Went back to bed. She kept on and on. I got up. I let her outside. She was ready to go outside, but she was ready to come back in. So I thought, well, maybe she just had to go to the bathroom. And I was so ready to go to bed. It was 1230. So I put her back in the bed. I came in here and laid down. And here she goes again. I was like, oh my Lord, what is wrong with you? And so this it was so funny i went outside today with chris and he showed me a hole next to the foundation that one of the armadillos started digging and yes we put out mothballs and he goes i guarantee you last night she heard that armadillo out here dig it and that's why she wanted out of that crate and i bet he's right because when i let her out she did go all the way around the house to the other side and i wondered why is she going over there so she was probably hunting those armadillos i'll let you see her i'll let you see my dogs they're resting but i gotta pick up the tripod to show them to you there she is resting well i couldn't get any rest last night and there's chris's dirty clothes and it stays so cold in my room, and the rest of the, that middle part of the house stays so hot, we went and got a box fan to blow the cool air out of my room into the living room. Now look who's over here. Happy. 
Can you say hello? They went to the groomers this week. The first time they've been to the groomers here um, in St. Mary's. Oh, Lord, that scared me. I thought it was going to fall backwards. Anyway, I'm tired. And no, I don't have any results on my legs. Um, if any, I don't know if y'all have asked me that or not because I didn't have my I didn't have my notes on like I should have. Um, I called the doctor Monday and I said, "Do you have results on my ultrasound?" I'll call them and see if they have those. And I said, "Good." I called her back that afternoon. Yes, we've got them, but I've got to let the doctor look at them. I said, okay. Um, called them Tuesday. Oh, Miss Nichols, yes. We have those results, and I had them sitting here for the doctor to look at. And let me see if she's put a note on that. You know, I've done, I've done so many tests in my lifetime, I know how it works. And when it's negative, they just get back on the phone, and they say, it looks good. It's negative. No, nothing to worry about. Do you want me to post it on your portal, or what do you want me to do? Blah blah blah. And this was her. Her. She said, um, "I had it sitting right here for the doctor to look at." Well, she don't have a note on it. Matter of fact, it's not even here. She must have taken it with her. Now, how would that make you feel? Taking it with her. And I thought, taking it with her home, taking it with her into her office? What do you mean taking it with her? And so I thought, well, maybe she just took it with her because she's busy and she had a lot on her plate. And so she grabbed the pile. Uh, but apparently she didn't grab the whole pile because she was looking through it. She said, Miss Nichols, I am going to go in here as soon as she's done with this patient. And I'm going to ask her what she wants me to do about your test results. Um, and I said, well, I'd appreciate that, because if I need further testing, I would like to know. They never called me back. That was Tuesday. This is Wednesday night. Now I'm starting to feel anxious. I've been fine the whole time. Um, Dana says, prayers for great news. I don't have any great news, Dana. I've not got any news at all. That's the problem. They're putting me off and putting me off. And I'm afraid they're putting me off because I need another test. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I got out that CD and I studied it. And I know y'all probably think, why do you do that? Because I'm a busy body. If y'all ain't figured that out, you should know it by now. Because I'm a perfectionist. Because, yes, I'm a type A personality. And because if I weren't this way, I probably wouldn't be alive today. Because you have to be your own advocate in health care. Let me tell you, even with my mama being sick, what she was and had so much done, if I had not been her advocate, she'd have been dead way before she was. And I'm just being real. Um, and I'm not saying health care is not any good here. I'm just saying they see so many people, and they only see you for a few minutes, and they're only as good as their staff. And their staff is only as good as the time they allow them to have. And so you just get lost in the shuffle and you have to pay attention. You have to study things. If you ever get breast cancer, don't be one of those that are so scared that you don't want to hear what's wrong with you. And you don't want to read about what's wrong with you. And you don't want to know anything. You're just going to go get the treatments done and be done with it. No, no, no. I'm here as a survivor 10 years out from a cancer that I had very, very uh, low chance of living past three to four years because it was a triple negative, very aggressive breast cancer. It was in two areas and 12 lymph nodes. Most people with triple negative, it, and I know I've got a triple negative person on here, and, but she's probably read it and knows it. Most people with triple negative do not make it past four years. If they do, it's great. If you make it past five years, most of the time it comes back and gets you within one or two years. I'm just being real. Y'all can read about it if you want to. Uh, it's not like a hormone positive breast cancer that can come back and bite you 15 years later 
Uh, most of the time, when you have triple negative, I don't know why I itch my nose every time I get on here, but I do. Most of the time, when you have triple negative, um, it gets you really quick because it's aggressive. And then once you've made it past five years, they say you're, you're home free. And I hope I'm home free, but I do know women on the site that has had a reoccurrence after seven and ten years with triple negative. It's not as common, but it can happen. Um, with that said, never, never, um, she says hers was DCIS grade three. I don't know what DCIS is. Uh, Rita, spell it out for me. Tell me what that stands for. I know that there's hormone free. I mean, there's hormone, there's HER2, and there is one more, and I, and I can't think of what it's called, and then there's triple negative. Um, but anyway, always be your own advocate. It's not going to hurt for you to get on the computer and, and read. And yes, it did make me feel like I wasn't going to live past two or three years because statistically, I shouldn't have lived past two or three years. Statistically, I should have never made it this far. And so, even if this is in my leg and it's something bad, I, I thought about it today. You know what? God has given me 10 more years. Uh, Y'all have no idea how much, when you, when you have an aggressive cancer like that and you really think you're about to, to leave your life and your babies, they were in the third and fourth grade, how much you would have just given anything for 10 more years. 10 more years? Oh my gosh, I could see him graduate high school. Well, now I've got one that just graduated high school. And if that's God's plan, I'm all for it. And I know y'all probably think, don't say that. But I'm not going to go against his plan for my life. I'm just not. But I'm also not going to sit back and not try to do something about it either, okay? Um, I'm not one of those that don't believe in health care and don't believe in uh, soda. It is not time to go to bed. I'm not putting you in the bed. Get over here with me. She's trying to get in her crate. Come here, soda. Uh, but anyway, with that said, I got my CD out. Y'all, I've got C I could give you a, I got a stack of CDs. Y'all have no, if y'all knew all the different tests I'd had run. And I know what, I know, I, I do, I study it. I get on the computer, I look at lipomas, I look at, um, I looked at lipomas, I looked at granul, granul, granulomas, which I know it's not. I looked at uh, soft tissue uh, tumors, okay? Everything that's in my leg is soft tissue. It's not hard, okay? I now have something on my back, uh, on my spine, and hopefully that is just inflammation because I do have all these kind of crazy problems. And, um, but I'm not even going to have that looked at until I figure out what's going on behind my leg. But when I looked at the CD and I studied it <clears throat> again last night, I didn't do it till last night. I did it the first day I had it, and I did it last night. My soft tissue looks a little different than lipomas do. Lipomas and the ultrasounds, you can see the shape of them, and they're kind of solid, and they're kind of around. But the little, they call it hypo, echo, hypo, hypo echoes, which is when the ultrasound takes the picture, if it's a harder surface, then the, uh, it makes a white place instead of a um, clear place, looking place, or black place. If it's dark, it's usually liquid. If it's white, it's usually harder, okay? So your muscles and your tendons look white, on the ultrasound, and the fat looks kind of clear, you know, like a grayish color. I mean, not, you can just see that it's kind of transparent, okay? But mine has these hypo, hypo marks, and most lipomas, the hypo marks are kind of, they're all the same. Like if this is the shape of the, the thing, the lipo marks are about the same as the, you know, the tissue going in the same direction, in other words. But mine 
are, you know, they're like not horizontal. They're like some, some of these. And then I have one that's absolutely a very distinct, um, harder surface that's round. Uh, they took several pictures of it. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe, hopefully, it is going to be what I'd like for it to be is a breakdown of muscle, but I don't really think it is. Um, I mean, because you, you can see it plain as day. Now, I don't know what it is, and hopefully it ain't nothing, but I can guarantee you one thing. If they come back and they say it's clear, I know what I've seen on that thing, and I know there's something there. And apparently there's something there. The doctor would have already called me back and said, oh, it's clear, no worries. But she hasn't called me back. So I'm thinking she's probably trying to get me an appointment. Um, but either way, I'm not going to fret over it. Because you know what? This is what I did when I got cancer the first time. Uh, it's okay to read about it. And sure, we worry about it. And sure, all of us want to be here a little longer. But you know what? Now that my mom is in heaven, now I love my kids and I love my husband. But whatever God has planned for me, I'm ready. Because I am saved, blood washed, and going to heaven. Somebody's in the kitchen. Um, now my girls are going to get up and start talking. So anyway, um, when I get some news, I promise I will post it. Y'all probably been thinking, why hasn't she told us anything? Because I still don't know anything. Is it not ridiculous that they haven't told me? At least said, yeah, there's a little something. We're just going to have to run a few more tests. Just something so that I'm not sitting. I mean, you think them knowing you're a cancer survivor that, you know, no, you worry a little bit. But anyway, let me close my door. Come on. Let's go. Today, and I filled up their water jug, so I'm sure that's what it is. Did y'all like staring at my chair? Sorry. I went and got my tea. I've been talked so much I need some tea. Be your own advocate. Read all you can get your hands on. The reason I say that is because you need to know what you're going through. You need to know what kind of cancer you got. You need to know what therapies are the best type for your cancer. Because I'm on, I'm I'm been there and done it. When you walk in that room, they don't no more know who you are as an individual than a man in the moon. I had a double mastectomy. I had been through chemotherapy and radiation and the whole nine yards. Went into my doctor and she's a great doctor. And she scheduled me for a mammogram to see how my cancer looked. I didn't even have boobs. They don't know. They just they just do whatever they usually do for your type and they write it down and they go to the next one and they go to the next one and they go to the next one. So read. Don't don't listen to these people that say don't get on the internet. And read that fake stuff, because there's a lot of stuff you can go to that's very legit. Now, there's a plenty of fake stuff on the internet, but you've got enough brains to, to be able to tell if you're on a good site or not, or a legit site. Um, like cancer.org, or uh, John Hopkins, or, I mean, you know, you know the good, you know the good sites. Melissa says, no news is good news. It ain't for me. Because they've had my results for days and they're not calling me. And listen, I've had this done so many times. I started getting stuff when I was 19. And, and so I'm nervous at this point. 
I think it's going to be something. Now, whether or not it's, you know, serious, I'm sure I'll have to have another test or that it doesn't call me back. Um, but anyway, with that said, I'm still okay. Um, and we all, you know, keep trucking. We all just keep trucking. There's so many of y'all that watch this show that are in much worse health than I'm in. There's some of y'all that I have a friend on here whose leg has been amputated. I've got people on here that cannot see good or that are blind. I have people, and they still cook. I have one woman that has one arm, and she still cooks. I have people that are going through treatment right now. I've got people whose husbands are going through treatment right now. I mean, we are just a big group of people and we all have issues because God didn't make our bodies to change. <laughs> we are real flesh and blood and things happen, you know, to our bodies. Um, I'm just looking at y'all's comments. Um, with that said, it's exciting to be by myself. I did get a couple of videos done today. Um, I posted on YouTube a video of us fishing. We wound up not catching hardly any fish, but we saw dolphin. We saw a, a rosette spoonbill, which I love. Uh, you, they never let you get close to them, so I had to snap pictures to get a pretty good shot for y'all. Um, we've seen uh, wood storks. We've seen, I already said dolphin. Just, you know, stuff like that. We caught some live shrimp, which was fun. Um, but we didn't catch any fish. So, I have a fish finder on my phone. And when it says it's a bad fish day, it usually is. And it did say it was a bad fish day. Even if the, even if the tides were right, the moons and stars weren't lined up just right, y'all. Oh, so, I guess Chris didn't catch much today because he's already headed home. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch in Proverbs a little bit before we leave because he'll be here soon probably. And it is chapter 2 of Proverbs and it's called The Value of Wisdom. And we talked a little bit about wisdom the last time we were on here. And um, wisdom is a wonderful thing to have. And we can all have it if we seek it. Okay, it says right here in my study Bible down at the bottom, it says the second result of, okay, let's see. The, re, the first result of heeding wisdom is that one will understand the fear of the Lord. This knowledge is possible only because the Lord gives it to the upright. So it is something the Lord gives you. It's just flat out something that he gives you. Okay, now some will say wisdom is the Holy Spirit. But it's not just the Holy Spirit because uh, you always have the Holy Spirit. When you're saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. But we can still seek wisdom through the Holy Spirit, maybe, and through God. But it's still a thing, okay? So listen to this. It says the second result of he... No. It says, thus while wisdom is to be sought diligently and cultivated in practice... It is not something merited by the actions of an individual. In other words, God is not going to give. Y'all are not going to like this. He's not going to give the Pope more wisdom. He's not going to give your preacher more wisdom. He's not going to give your daddy more wisdom. Or your mother. He's only going to give it to those who seek it. Now, I'm not saying the Pope doesn't have any wisdom or your mother or your preacher. If they're seeking it, he can indeed give it to them. But it is not given on merit. So just because of who you are doesn't give you wisdom. Okay? That is a prime example of somebody saying wisdom is the Holy Spirit. So therefore, if I'm saved... And I have the Holy Spirit living in me. I have wisdom. No. You have to seek wisdom. Okay? And then um, 
then you will have wisdom. So there's plenty of people that get saved when they're kids. They go to church. They open their Bibles at church. They open their Bibles on occasion, but they never really study the Word of God. They never really seek wisdom. They never ask God for a lot of wisdom, true godly wisdom. And so even if they're Christians, doesn't mean that they have wisdom. Not really. I mean, there's plenty of Christians that can make some pretty crazy decisions and lead a pretty wild life out of the abundant life of Jesus because they just don't seek wisdom is what it pretty much amounts to. So, let's listen to this. It says, It is not something merited by the actions of an individual. On wisdom's foundation in God's gracious covenant, and it tells us where, it says, um, it states that the purpose of the gift of wisdom is to protect the paths of the saints. Okay? So it says that the whole reason that he gives us wisdom is to protect our path. That means what we're choosing to do, what decisions we make, what, you know, which direction we're going to go. And um, it says the second result of heeding wisdom is one that gains understanding of righteousness and justice and equity. Uh, it says because wisdom takes root in the heart and acts to protect the person who embraces it, there is a reversing sequence between guarding, watching, that links um, a clause, which means the Lord will be watching over the way of his saints. So it's God watching after us, okay, through the wisdom and understanding. So what this means, that he will give them, okay. I'll give you an example. Let's say we have somebody. Well, I, I guess I won't. I, I guess I won't get on that rabbit trail. How's that? I'm just saying that it says he takes care of his saints, you and me as Christians, through the wisdom and understanding he will give them. So he's going to give us wisdom and understanding, but we have to seek it. So, where you may be sisters, you may have a sister, you may have raised in the same church, you may have gotten saved about the same time, um, you may have one sister that seeks God's wisdom, and one sister, and they both go to, let's say they both go to church, or one of them goes to church and one of them don't. It really don't matter going to church so much if, if you're not doing anything with it besides making it a show or making it a... Uh, Going to church is good. Don't get me wrong. And if you're saved and you go to church, you should feel conviction. And you should feel, sometimes you should have the kind of preacher that at least makes you feel like a sinner every once in a while. Because what's the point in going if you don't? Um, I mean, you can stay at home and not feel like a sinner. Or not have anybody preach to you. Or I'm not saying they should preach hell and damn fire nation and all that stuff. You know, I'm just saying that they should step on your toes a little bit about gossip or your tongue or the way you treat your children or your husband or the way you might talk to somebody at the store or etc and the holy spirit helps you do that too but you know what the holy spirit does much more than the church does and the holy spirit can guide you in ways that the church will never and the only way that it can have the power that it needs to is that, that you seek wisdom okay so you may have these two sisters, and they both may look equal in the church, and they may look seem equal, but one may be wiser than the other, and not because she's not saved, or one's not saved and one is, but because one seeks the wisdom of God more than the other. Matter of fact, you may have one sister that goes to church every Sunday, and one sister that never steps foot in the church, but she reads her Bible, and she has a relationship with God, and she seeks wisdom. And she may actually have more wisdom and knowledge and know the, the path that God would have her go more than the other person. What I'm saying is nothing that we do merits us favor with God. And nothing that we do will merit us favor with being wise enough to know what decisions to make. He... 
that is a gift. Just like the Holy Spirit, just like his son coming here and him giving him to us as a gift of salvation. Wisdom is a gift too. Um, and sure we get, that's why I'm saying you can't just say it's just the Holy Spirit. Because when you're saved, you do receive the Holy Spirit. But whether or not you feed the Holy Spirit, whether or not you feed your flesh or your spiritual side is up to you. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was interesting that he said that it is through wisdom and understanding he will give. That is how he watches after us. So if you think that you can get in trouble and you, you had not talked to God in two years and something horrible happened in your life, and you can get down on your knees and you can ask him for guidance. Sure, he's going to listen and sure, he may hear your cry. But it's really hard for him to lead your path. A true wisdom in your mind path on which road to take from one, one instance on getting on your knees. You know, if something I would think that you would need to seek. And um, it says right here that you have to um, seek after it diligently. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not saying that he wouldn't forgive you or he wouldn't listen to you or he may not even make a miracle happen in your life to, to prove that he's God. But if he did it, he'd do it because he wanted to do it and because he's God and he wants you to see that he's God. And... I don't know. And then you've got those who, here's another, here's another scenario. Let's say you haven't got on your knees in two years and prayed out to God. So you think, well, maybe I should call Joanne down the road because I know she's spiritual and I'll get her to pray for me. No. Now, if you... Ask Joanne, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying her prayers ain't any good, of course, but God doesn't merit favor. And so I don't really think our prayers are merited in favor either. Now, I'll tell you what is merited, not merited, but what she may have is more wisdom than you to take the right kind of path or know what God would have you do as a child of God. If she's, you know, she may say, you know, you've done this, and here's your two decisions, and this is God, This would be God's way. And she could lead you on a better path because she has more wisdom through the Holy Spirit and study. But do I think her prayers go higher than yours? No. But would she have more wisdom to help you and your feet go in the right direction? Yes. So, yes, you need the saints, and yes, you need to talk to people who are saved, and you need to have people like that in your life that you can turn to, whether or not you're a devout Christian or not. You need somebody there so that you're not asking Jane at the beauty shop, you know, whether or not you should leave your husband because of this, that, and this. You should be asking Joanne, who has the wisdom, um that's going to give you the right godly way and you may be even saved but um, it doesn't mean that you always know what to do if if you're not seeking it I hope that makes sense to y'all Lord have mercy um, I hope I've done somebody some good so don't think you got to call Joanne to give a prayer shout out to God for you because not I'm not saying that prayer doesn't help because I like for people to pray for me all day long. Uh, but I don't think anybody's prayer is more important than the other. I don't think the preacher praying for you does any more good than uh, your granddaughter praying for you. I really don't. Absolutely not. But like I said, one may have more wisdom to, to, to teach you the ways of the Lord. Um, hope that helps you today. So... Let's see. It says,
the Lord grants, uh, it, 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 the Lord tells you what wisdom helps deliver you from, okay? It says he deliver, it delivers wisdom seeking the Lord and walking in the paths that he would have you walk. It says that it delivers you from the deception of those on the evil path. It delivers you from being flattered into unfaithfulness because it talks about a woman in here and, you know, one of those real bad, lovely kind that seems so lovely at the time to a man. Um, I don't want to say anything ugly because your grandchild might be in there with you. And it directs one instead to walk in the way that is both true and good. So, it delivers you from evil. It keeps you from being unfaithful. And it directs you to walk in the way that is both true and good. Those three things. So what do you think Joanne's going to say to you when you want to leave your husband? Unless he's beating you or, or doing something like molesting your children, of course. Absolutely. Get rid of him. But if, if those things aren't happening, if wisdom teaches you to be faithful, to um, forsake evil... And to know which path to take, don't you think Joanne would be better to ask about that than the hairdresser down at the beauty shop if she's not one of these type of women? Absolutely. Does, can you tell which kind of women, which kind of woman is that on the outside? No. Does it matter how she fixes her hair? No. Does it matter what kind of clothes she wears? No. Does it matter... Any of that matter? Absolutely not. Only God knows the heart of a person. But usually their light shines and their godly example does show. But it doesn't show because they put on a dress every day. It shows through the love that they show other people and the things that they sacrifice and do for other people instead of themselves, okay? Doesn't have anything to do with merit, doesn't have anything to do with looks, it doesn't have anything to do with where they are in the ladder to some that, that people have made seem important at the church or wherever it may be. It all has to do with the heart. And even in here it says, let me find it. Just give me a minute and I'll find it. Sorry. Okay, here it is. Wisdom takes root in the heart. In the heart. And acts to protect the person who embraces it. You're not going to see somebody's heart. But you will know by the fruits of the Spirit whether they are you know doing it or not it's so funny because and you may be this person and it might make you mad um but i posted my brother's sermon or my sister did sunday on my colored valley cooks page and she said you know i've been waiting on somebody to say something you know that isn't very nice about it she said but i never would have dreamed the one that did would have been somebody that had already been to church but she had somebody comment on the church service. I've already been to church today. Really? Now, does that sound like someone whose heart is soft and full of love and full of wisdom and caring about other people and whether or not they know who God is? And maybe the gospel could be spread to them. You never know who God's working on. 
So my sister said, I wanted to say, well, maybe you should go sit back down in the pew. Okay, hopefully that was not you. And even if it was, maybe, it, maybe it's a good thing it was you. Maybe you need to be woken up and shown that you are not shining your light for Jesus and being a, the Christian that other people want to be around. If you say things like that, just because you go to church doesn't make you a good person. Matter of fact, none of us are good. No, not one, according to Romans. I think it's 3.23, Romans 3.22. There is none not good, no, not one. So, um, but you don't want to just deliberately be bad either, do we? I hope y'all enjoyed tonight. I've had a lot to say. I don't get to say enough to y'all. Um, I will pro I promise and post my results when I get them. Praise the Lord. I hope I get them tomorrow. Just praise the Lord before it even comes. And you know what? Praise the Lord in the good. Praise the Lord in the bad. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. I'm ready to fight it. If it's not, I'm fine too. It could be fibromyalgia. It could be, because I have so many problems since I went through chemotherapy. My tendons and my muscles and my, I am not like the normal person. Not many normal people could go out to L.A., get off an airplane, pull their luggage around the airport, and separate their lower rib. I am not normal in my muscle tone makeup, okay? It had totally changed my life. Chemo did. Um, and so, we'll see. And I promise I'll tell y'all. Let's say our prayers and um, let's pray that we could seek wisdom. But I've been trying to do it at night when I go to bed. Seek wisdom and tell God that I want wisdom. But you know, we can't just depend on Him to show us everything. We also have to get in His Word because He did provide it for us. Um... Yeah. And we're all guilty of not taking the time out we need to to do those things. So we're going to say our prayers, and um, hopefully I will talk to you all soon. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word. The word, which is the word written through the Holy Spirit. Your way of talking to us. The word, which is the sword. Your Son, Jesus Christ. That whole Bible, the whole word, is nothing but everything about Jesus Christ. May we be that Joanne. May we be that woman who seeks wisdom. May we be that woman who could tell somebody the right kind of advice, godly advice, godly decisions, and not get our, our flesh in a tizzy and spout out before we would come to you or think about what would be best for a person. We're all guilty of it. Each and every one of us. None of us are good. And we all need to see that so that we can humble ourselves and give you the reign in our life. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good night. I love you. Bye.